Well, you should! Without saying too much, Encanto is another perfect example of Disney's ability to flawlessly combine the fantastical with the humane. It shows off the down-to-earth struggles of a broken home, literally and metaphorically, while giving us plenty of magical scenes involving sentient houses, bold colors, and superhuman siblings that belt out songs by Lin-Manuel Moana. And it all wraps up with a great lesson about what the family's miracle truly entails. It's not about the Herculean strength or the Martha Stewart level gardening abilities, it's about the deep-rooted love that unites them all together. I mean, it was a selfless act of love that brought forth the miracle in the first place, and that's what the family is supposed to understand. The familial bond they share is the miracle, and it always has been. Overall, this movie is a hands-down classic with top-notch animation, excellent characters, pinpoint messaging, and emotional conflicts that are deeper than that gigantic chasm in Bruno's room. Seriously, dude, put up some guardrails or something. What if someone wants to come and visit and they fall right off? Is that why we don't talk about Bruno? Because he was arrested for his room not being up to code? Speaking of segues, let's actually talk about Bruno. We don't talk about- Shut up! Bruno is hands down my favorite character in this movie. Yes, even more than our Cinnamon Churro protagonist. He's hilarious, he's adorable, his power is awesome, John Leguizamo voices him perfectly, he's a certified rat mama. I'm the giant rat that makes all of the rules. And his song is the biggest banger in the whole movie. I mean, come on, it's basically Disney's version of Smooth by Santana, aka one of the best songs ever. We don't talk about Bruno or else forget about it. But it's not just Bruno's character that I love, it's also what he represents in the family's big picture. At first I thought that all the Madrigal's gifts were given solely based on each child's personality, maybe with a dash of luck sprinkled in, but when I look at the family tree as a whole, especially the original triplets, it makes me think that the miracle had a much more direct reason for what kind of magic each member possessed. Like it was all a grand plan with one specific goal in mind. And Bruno, in my opinion, was the most vital piece in this plan, which is why the entire familial structure basically fell apart when their negative attitudes wound up driving him away. What was this plan? What were the goals? How did a candle map this all out? All shall be answered as we delve into the Madrigal's unfortunate past and show why vilifying Bruno was their first big no-no. It's time to explain why we should talk about Bruno. Let's begin on that fateful day when Alma's husband was taken away. While there's no direct explanation for how the miracle happened, I believe that the spirit of Alma's husband, Pedro, is the one who possessed the candle after his death. Her pleas for him to be spared didn't save his life, but it did save his soul, allowing him to technically still be with her and provide for her, just in a more magical and incorporeal way. If this is true, it would mean that Pedro was the one in control of the magic and would be able to do whatever he pleased with it. And what are the initial things he does with it? Well, he creates a gigantic mountain range, cutting Alma and the other escapees from the outside world, he built a sentient house that would shelter his family, and within said house, he provided his children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren with magical gifts that would aid his family and his people for years to come. On the surface, it seems like this place was supposed to be a permanent, self-sustaining paradise for the family and all that followed them, but I don't think that's the case. In my eyes, this little encanto that Pedro created was likely meant to be a temporary place of healing that he expected them to all leave eventually. I mean, these poor people have lost their homes, their friends, their loved ones. So obviously Pedro would want them to have a nice place that's safe from future harm where they can focus on recovery, with Alma and her gifted children leading the way once they themselves are healed. But I don't think that he intended them to remain isolated from the outside world forever. I mean, if I was an undead ghost candle dad, which I don't think is ever gonna happen, I would want my family to go out and see the world and enjoy more of life's offerings. And I imagine that Pedro probably would have lowered some of the mountains or something once the family was ready to leave of their own accord. But the problem is that the family was never ready. They kept misinterpreting Pedro's offerings and remained in their little safe space for way too long, with Alma completely suffering in silence, which is the exact opposite of what he originally hoped that she'd do. And this eventually led to the family breaking from the inside out. To better explain what I mean, let's look at the first generation of Madrigal kids, including Peppa, Julieta, and of course, Bruno. On paper, these original gifts were the perfect three-step plan that would allow Alma and the others to heal themselves in the present and also pave the way for future healing. Julieta and Peppa possessed the gifts necessary for physical and emotional healing, 
Julieta's gift of healing food helps to take off the physical burdens that come with grieving. I mean, when your emotional wounds are extremely deep, it takes a toll on your body, like cramps, headaches, pains, dehydration from crying, and things like that. And Julieta's treats were meant to physically comfort anyone who ate them, meaning that's one less stressful thing they have to deal with. Peppa, meanwhile, has emotions that are tied to the weather. And while at first it doesn't seem like this would do much for healing, hear me out. We know that kids who are close to their parents are very in sync with their emotions. Basically, if a parent is outwardly upset or happy, usually the kid will be inclined to feel the same way. And this probably goes double for Peppa, who's been shown to be super sensitive to things. I imagine that when the town sees some kind of out-of-place weather pattern, like a storm or a massive rain shower, they'd equate that to something being amiss in the Madrigal household. And this would drive them to approach Alma and ask, Hey, is everything alright in there? We've got some time if you maybe want to talk or share a meal or something? And that's what Pedro wants. There's no better way to emotionally heal than to talk and vent with others. And Peppa was meant to draw all of Alma's friends and neighbors towards her by making it evident that she was upset. And at last, we have Bruno, who, again, is the most important piece here. Unlike Peppa and Giulietta, whose gifts were used for healing past and present wounds, Bruno's gift was meant to be key in helping the family prepare for future tragedies. Whenever the family or the town had a question about what would occur later on, he would give them a literal crystal clear vision of what the future would hold, allowing them to better mentally and emotionally prepare themselves for what's to come, instead of being shocked and caught off guard by some kind of huge unfortunate event. Essentially, Bruno's gift should have allowed the family to develop better coping skills by giving them early access to life's inevitable occurrences. Ergo, the better they're able to prepare for tragedies that they know are coming, the easier it'll be for them to eventually apply those same skills when an unexpected tragedy happens. That way they won't have to experience as much of the pain as they did when their first big loss occurred. If this all went according to plan, Alma and her people would be able to fix their wounds in a calm, safe place using the gifts, develop as people to the point where they won't need to rely on the gifts as much, and ultimately go off and live the amazing lives that they deserve to lead as brand new people. But as we see in the movie, everything went in the complete opposite direction of what Pedro originally intended. And it all started with the family's first big misinterpretation. Out of all three of the original gifts, Bruno's is the one that sticks out like a sore thumb, and is the one that can easily be misinterpreted as negative, which is exactly what happens. When the family notices that most of his predictions foresaw negative events, they instantly associated that with Bruno wanting to hurt the family. Bruno doesn't care about these loved ones because all of his predictions are bad, which is obviously not true. It's not his fault that life is full of misfortune, that's just how reality works. And his whole purpose was to teach you people to be ready for real life when you eventually leave your little paradise. But they simply didn't see it that way. And all of this naysay towards Bruno was the first true sign that this plan laid out by Pedro was likely going to fail. The family's treatment of Bruno led to two bad habits that would continue throughout future generations. Number one, seeing a family member as a gift more than as a person. I know that everybody keeps repeating that they don't talk about Bruno, but has anyone ever actually talked to Bruno? You know, clear up a few things with the man himself? You're telling me that Snow White and the Seven Storms never walked up to her brother and asked, Uh, hola hermano, I know a lot of your predictions have been pretty negative, so you're not doing that on purpose, right? You still love us, right? Yup. Okay, good. Well, I like to think that Alma put out some kind of fear-mongering campaign amongst the family, painting Bruno in an evil light and basically scaring everybody into not interacting with the poor guy. I know that Alma isn't evil or anything, and vilifying Bruno is just a misunderstanding brought on by past suffering and desperation, but still, this is a bad practice on her part, and it would only lead to later siblings becoming extremely stressed under her guidance. And number two, sweeping any and all negative things under the rug. I don't think I need to tell you how dangerous this is. The fact that Alma never talked to anyone about her problems, the fact that she kept insisting that everything was fine when others wanted to help, the fact that this mindset of secrecy was passed down to later kids, the fact that she kept hiding and berating her own son just because of his seemingly negative gift and encouraging the other children to not talk to him until the whole situation became a house with a Bruno on its walls? Yeah, not good. This complete misunderstanding of Bruno's role in the grand picture was the main thing that caused Pedro's original plan to crumble to dust, and it resulted in this poor, poor boy being outcast from a family that he clearly still loves very much. He drew his own table setting! Someone hugged this poor child! 
Obviously, Pedro saw that his gift was starting to fail early on, but he still gave the family a chance to sort things out on their own. The next generation of gifts didn't have anything to do with healing, but it would make running the town easier while the Madrigals got their stuff together. But they never did, and only wound up getting worse, and that's when Pedro decided, All right, that's it. The Hammer of Candle Dad is coming down. We gotta fix this now. And you know exactly what happens next. Ensure that Mirabelle doesn't get a gift. Check. Give her a perspective of an outsider looking in so she can track down the true problems with the family without being weighed down by Abuela Alma. Check. Take away a little bit of certain siblings' powers so they'd be inclined to actually talk to people for once. Check. And this ultimately leads to Mirabelle absolutely nailing the main problem with the Madrigal household and making it crystal clear in front of the whole family. And now that the family has finally realized what needs to be done of their own accord, which is what he was waiting for, Pedro literally brings the house down and finally opens up the Encanto's mountain range in the exact spot where he met his end. This leads to a sweet conversation between Mirabelle and Alma, where she finally does the thing she was supposed to do from the start and be emotionally open with other people so she can heal! Yes! <laughs> And now with Pedro's main goal finally achieved, his spirit leaves the candle and gets reincarnated as a butterfly. As if to say, I know that the warmth and the light of the fire was soothing for a time, but you need to stop huddling around it 24-7, spread your wings, fly away, and go live the life I always wanted you to live. Thanks for the adventure. Now go out and have a new one. Oh wait, wrong movie, but you get the idea. We don't actually see if the Madrigals ever venture outside of the Encanto. Heck, we don't even get a photo montage like we did in Up, but maybe that's something they'll actually explore if Encanto ever becomes a thing. <laughs> For real though, I hope they don't call it that. So yeah, I think it's kind of interesting to view Encanto through this lens. Not just as a film about the struggles of a broken family, but also as a cautionary tale about how inherently well-meaning things can still be misconstrued as bad depending on the situation, and how one simple misunderstanding can make everything collapse on itself. Bruno did nothing wrong, y'all's was just stupid. You can quote me on that. But what do you guys think? Do you think that it was Pedro's hand that guided this whole family plan? Do you agree with my rundown on Bruno and his family? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for tuning in everybody, and I hope to see you all... Wait a second. A woman emotionally beset by a tragedy involving the death of loved ones, shutting out any and all interaction with others, leaving society and building a magical makeshift house in the mountains? Are we sure this isn't just frozen again?